be there to catch you out. Okay, we're just going to go over this again. My name is Nick Sarator. I'm the exhibitions director for the Rehoboth Art League, and we are proud to have this morning uh, Paul Ryder, who is our juror and awards judge this year for the seventh regional jury exhibit photography exhibition. Uh, it's been a great show. Um, unfortunately, as you know, we were not able to have an opening reception, but we are very fortunate to have Paul talk to us this morning over this, the closing weekend of this show. So Paul, thank you very much and welcome. Thank you. Um, a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to have been asked to juror the show. Uh, it was a wonderful exhibition, a wonderful group of images that were submitted and very diverse, very original work that I, I was really fascinated with. And as usual, being a juror, it's not easy to select the work that is actually in a show. Um, it's, it's always rather daunting <laughs> to look at everyone's work and say, oh, who's whose work is deserving of being in a show and whose work isn't. Um, so the pressure is always on the jury. Um, but once again, the work that was submitted and the work that's in the show, I'm very proud of in terms of the creativity, um, use of craft and approach to photography. This is, that was one of the things yeah. I was looking for um, when I was looking at the work uh, was that people were, were looking at photography in a slightly different way. Um, I'm not, exactly saying that everyone needed to reinvent the wheel of what a photograph could actually be. But I wanted to see some unique perspectives of the world and certain aspects of what people are interested in um, that really stood out to me. I, I was looking for something you know, unique, which is very much what I felt I found within this group of um, images. So um, what I like to do is just do a slideshow of the work that is in the show. Um, I'm not sure how many of you have actually seen the show in person. I'd like to, I could sit, you said 1030. Oh. So can you guys still hear me? Okay. Um, so I'm gonna do a little slideshow slide sort of the work that's there. Once again, I'm not sure of who was actually in, who actually came down to see the show. So. Uh, it's good to see everybody that's working there, and I'll discuss a little bit about each person's work, um, and what I thought about, and what it, what that, what I thought about their work, and why I chose the work for the show. And of course, the the winners of the the prizes at the end. I'll talk about them, obviously. So let me get to the screen. Okay. Okay, can you guys see the full screen? Yes. Okay, good, okay. Um, so what I did is just to break it down into categories of, I started off basically with people, places, and things, and then the award winners. Um, when I juried the show, there was no reason for me to do that. I wasn't looking for anything specific. I was looking at everybody's work on their individual merit, how they approached the photographs, um, what it was that they found interest in. Um, there was an, an initial impulse that I basically went with in terms of looking at the work. Um, and basically that's when I started looking at what I thought was good. Um, for this photograph, um, <clears throat> what struck me immediately is this intense gaze of the man. And, and then the more you look at it, you start to see his condition. Um, but just the weathered look on his face, the intensity of his face, um, basically the layers that are there. That was really what incurred, um, basically is what made me find this photograph so intriguing. Um, and the look on his face, you can just see so much going on inside this man's mind as to where he is in the world. Um, and I just thought it was really lovely, lovely. And it was just an image that really spoke to me in terms of the care. Um, it wasn't taking pity on this person. It was trying to show this person for who he truly is, trying to give some dignity to this person. So that's what I was impressed with when I saw this photograph. Um, this is complete opposite in terms of it being something what I call the idea of the art of the snapshot. Um, one of the things about photography is that <clears throat> It started off as being this very mechanical device that you had to have years of training or at least knowledge of how to use the materials. Uh, along with Kodak that came along and basically allowed everybody to have the opportunity to take a photograph. Today, it is now available for everybody to use in terms of your phone. It's with you all the time. And this idea of the snapshot is a really great 
thing that really puts photography in a completely different world than the other arts. And that's what I really enjoyed about this image. It's something that painting can try to emulate, but that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to emulate what a photograph does. And this is truly what photography can be about. It's a moment, it's a fraction of a second. It's what the photographer sees, um, the emotions that they can carry um, through a mechanical device. And here it is in a photograph. Oops, I like to go back to that. Okay. Um, this one I just find very lovely. It's something that you think not much of when you do a portrait of somebody, but the eye, once again, is always that window to the soul. And the fact that you're coming in so close and pretty much it's almost an abstract photograph, but obviously the eye is something that was really obvious for us to notice. But just that look, the use of the composition, the little wisp of hair, uh, I found this really quite intriguing. <clears throat> this one reminds me of some photographers from the South. Um, McLaughlin is this one of his names. He did a whole series on the South. And when I saw this image, he just reminded me very much of that style of his work. Um, anyway, not knowing what the intent of the photographer artist is for this, uh, I was just impressed with this use of the cemetery, uh, the use of the figure within the cemetery, the use of the hands and proximity to the statue of the angel of the wings. Um, there's also the look of what I see to be um, a certain type of film that was used. I'm not sure if this is done with film or if it was done visually. I think it's done with film because I see the black edges around it. So I assume it must be some form of infrared film that the photographer is using. And I kind of like the fact that it gives that surreal effect to the images. And the fact that, that you know he's using or she is using the um, figure without seeing the actual face uh, in conjunction with the statue. Um, it's really quite beautiful in that regards. The, the mythology, the mystery, um, the surrealism of it, that's what I was impressed with with this shot. Um, so once again, the idea of the, the snapshot um, and <clears throat> the idea of a snapshot being that it's not exactly what we're always looking for. Um, a lot of times photographers will set things up. Other photographers are wandering around looking for certain things to photograph. This is one of those shots where somebody's wandering about looking for something and you, it's being in the right place at the right time where you have a group of people in a situation where they basically seem slightly out of place uh, in terms of their, you know, who they are, where they live, um, the character of their dress. And here they are in sort of one of the more decadent areas of our country in terms of enjoying themselves. Um, and I think it's a great juxtaposition. The colors are also really quite wonderful. Um, it's an overcast day. Um, you have these beautiful pastel colors on their clothing and it really jumps out at you. And once again, I do like the fact that it's sort of like from behind in terms of, we're not really looking at who the people are per se. We know who they are through their, through their dress. Um, so all these symbols that are existing in this photograph is what really drew me to this one. Um, <clears throat> So there are, you know, certain images that are part of our, you know, time frame where we are in our world. Certain ones stand out and really signify what is going on. Um, so going back to that image of the little boy in the ocean. So that idea of the snapshot. This has a similar feel to it. The man in the background holding up the toddler, younger girl in the foreground. Um, it has that snapshot feel to it, but a little bit more profane in terms of the fact that one, it's looking up towards the child, um, the look on her face, and of course, the mask. This is something that is just so unique to this time period. Um, and <clears throat> it's really quite interesting in terms of she's masked in the background. I don't think they're masked. I can't see, I don't think I see it. Anyway, it's just sort of this loss of that childhood freedom that is sort of being shown to me in this picture. And that's what I was drawn towards with this one. Um, portraiture, portraiture is very strong and I love this for what it is. The use of the light 
And that's one thing about photography it is about light. That is the medium that we all work within. Um, we all think we have cameras, we have either film, we're using digital. We all think that's the actual medium, but the actual medium we work in is light. Light is what we're capturing. If it wasn't for light, there would be darkness. And that's one of the things about this image that is so impressive is the fact that the use of the light, how the light is used to sculpt the space, the pose that the the sitter is in is really lovely. The background that's being used, how the background is being sort of manipulated with light is really wonderful in terms of how the image comes together. It's very strong. Use of black and white is very strong. And that's what I really love about this image. Back to the snapshot aesthetic. Um, this is really lovely. The color is beautiful. I love the blue. I love the fact of the silhouette. And once again, it's the idea of that playfulness, that youthfulness, um, that energy that children have. And it's such a wonderful shot in terms of <clears throat> where it is, the time of day it is. Um, we don't need to see the detail. I love the silhouette. I think the silhouette is beautiful. That beautiful blue hue in the background I find so lovely in terms of it being not a full solid blue, but slightly gradating um, the different textures that are used in terms of the netting that's surrounding this trampoline, um, <laughs> air being flown up in the air, the arms and legs being extended. It's just wonderful. Everything where the figure is and how it's captured, beautiful composition. I really love this. I think it's really great. And here, taking the idea of what a portrait can be and how you can transform it sort of based upon the use of the silhouette prior to the shot. This is sort of similar, but not exactly the same. Um, the use of some sort of form of distortion creating this beautiful pattern and a very sort of surreal look to the person, sort of this you know, someone trying to escape or the possible agony, who knows? There's lots of things that could be placed into this image. But once again, the blue hue is really quite beautiful is what caught my eye. Um, the use of the textures of the pattern of that, I assume it's like the glass that's in the foreground. I love this, I think it's wonderful. I think it's a great way of one distorting the figure, but also showing it in a very, very, very different way. And also something like this, where you take a photograph, and I assume this is done after the fact that with the pins being placed onto the photograph, I'm not sure exactly how it's done, but the distortion in a different way, as, as opposed to actually physically being on the person, this is being done after the fact. So <clears throat> the look of this, the meaning behind it as a viewer, I'm not sure what it could it possibly be. I can read a lot of different things into it, but as a way of distorting the figure, distorting the face, um, the intensity of the stare of the, of the sitter, um, the use of the color, um, the background, all of this I think works really lovely as a photograph. It's very strong, unique, and very different. Um, this one I love in terms of the simplicity. Um, Normally you would see somebody in a situation, an environment where this would take place, taking them totally out of that environment and placing them into this neutral background, the white background. This is something that you would see in a portrait studio, something that you would see in a fashion set. Um, very simple, very clean, but the motion that's happening here, this idea of I'm leaving, I'm changing, I've got my bags, I pack my bags, I'm leaving. It can be many different things. It could be someone leaving a relationship, somebody moving on with their life, someone going on vacation, lots of different things. I love the ambiguity of this one, um, but also the simplicity of it. It's, it can say a lot. It's sort of an icon in terms of the fact that it's almost white background. And that's what the white background is really, really, really good at doing, the isolation of the figure. So that is all we have to work with, is the figure and the prop and the clothing that the subject is wearing. <clears throat> we can read into it and figure out what, what's going on, but I love the amb ambiguity in terms of us being able to try to put our own aspects, our own past or our own experiences into this photograph. And this one is, once again, the use of distorting the figure. This is the surrealism again at work. And I really love this. And the use of black and white. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the photographer's name. 
uh, he did a lot of work with mask and it was really wonderful work, um, very surreal. Um, so this sort of just gives me the feel about that. And it almost has a John Baldessari look to it also, minus the color dot. But the use of the circular image on top of the person's face to obscure who they actually are with nature in front of it, I th think is really quite interesting. I like the fact that they're in nature. It's sort of to get the idea that this is what they're all about. It's like nature is who they are. Um, it's basically inside them. <clears throat> and I'm not sure exactly if it's this is the same person or not for all three figures or if it's three separate figures, but this is one of the things about photography that I love is this beauty of being able to use the element of time and time to create something completely different. And this is one aspect of photography that sort of gets overlooked a lot. Of time, a lot. Um, time is something that is important in photography to make the exposure. And when photographers start to exploit the idea of time, instead of it being a frozen moment, which is what we're no, mostly normally looking at when we see a photograph, the element of time, the element of movement um, is really quite interesting. And I love this. So I'm thinking it's the same person three different times. I could be wrong, but I love the fact that there is this aspect of movement, time, motion, and I found it very fascinating. Once again, continuing here, um, I just enjoy the fact that this there's this, this beauty, this mystery, um, sort of surrealistic look. I mean, we get the idea that it's a person mostly because of the foot that's frozen, but you get these very distorted figures in the, each time, the movement, the flow, and it's not just a solid moment. It's this idea of the passage of time, the movement through space, um, also, the use of <clears throat> the building, the Guggenheim, as a place to, to stage this, I think is really good also. The use of the idea of modern art and this imitating modern art or using modern art, using the building itself, the, 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 the architecture, the lines, um, the composition of this, everything works really well with this. It's really beautiful. And again, with this, use of the building, use of the blurs. I really enjoy this in terms of <clears throat> various different aspects of it. The time, it's not really about these people. It's about the movement of people through the space. So it is mostly of the space, but you get this element and it's a continuous. It's not just these people, it's people are constantly moving through the space. And that's what I enjoy about these. <clears throat> then into directly places. So uh, one thing about photography that I really enjoy is the graphic element that is part of photography. When photographers can really see the design elements that are within their image, the scene that they're photographing, and then start utilizing it, the layering of multiples through this use of glass so you can see inside, you can see the reflections, um, you get this multiple layer aspect that's going on. I really enjoy this. I think this becomes really wonderful in terms of the design of what they see within the frame, the composition, basically showing us what they're not showing us is what makes this really, really wonderful. And again, the idea of design, um, the use of light, again, to create something. Um, so you're using the architecture's design, but once again, it's how you frame everything. Um, this is really one of the elements of photography that works really strong is that it becomes very graphic. The actual framing of the shot says more. When we look at the building, we see it from all sides as we walk around it. But when you put the frame of the camera around it and define certain aspects of it, you're creating something that's completely different. Um, it's sort of a vignette of the building, but at the same time, it's the photographer's vision. And it's a very strong vision because you're seeing these elements personally. It's the way that you think a really interesting aspect of all these lines, shapes, and forms come together to create something that is unique. Along with this, <clears throat> patterns. I love this, the simplicity of this. It becomes almost minimal. And that's what I was fascinated with this one is the rep repetition of the patterns, the use of this white space in the middle 
the darker reflections of the sky and just this really wonderful pattern that was created here. And then you go to the opposite where it gets far more complex and color, the nuance of color that is in this image is what drew me to this one. Um, there is the sense of design similar to the previous images that I was just speaking about, but the nuance and subtlety of color is what really drew me to this image. I love the blues mixing in with the warmer tones and then, you know, the subtle patterns that you see within it. Um, this one doesn't scream at you right away. Oh, I'm all about design and all this. It really comes out and says it in a subtle way. The longer you look at this, the more intriguing this image becomes. Um, there's more for you to look at, more for you to see. And that's what I was fascinated with with this one. Um, totally different, out of the city, into the country. <clears throat> um, nature. Nature is beautiful. Nature can give you so much to look at in terms of patterns, shapes, uh, and the perspective. And this is wonderful, this perspective of looking up and the way the trees all go towards the center um, of that one tree with that beautiful orange bouquet of leaves surrounded by the greenery of all the other trees is really quite wonderful. Um, it, it became something else. It's not just a photograph of the trees the sense of design that was being used in here, similar to how the use of buildings and the, the sense of design the architects use. This is nature's architecture, and it looks amazing when you look at it in this perspective. Um, looking up like this really shows the lines that exist via the trees and use of that circular pool of orange leaves is really just what I loved about this photograph. The colors are just really lovely. The fact that the orange is the center of the subject and everything else, the, the, the subtlety of the blue with the clouds, the green and the lines is, makes this a very, very strong visual image. Um, nature has that ability to just keep going. And as much as man comes into existence and tries to control nature, nature comes screaming back. And that's what I love about this photograph. It's that little crack in this pavement and that flower decided I'm gonna grow here. And that's what's wonderful. And you can see them further off in the distance. And this is what's really beautiful about this. That's what I love about this one. And this one, <clears throat> the use of the infrared Photography, again, I think it's infrared, I'm not sure, I'm assuming. I'm assuming because of the use of the way the trees are rendered, the leaves are rendered. And that's usually what happens with infrared film is that it reads the heat that's coming off of the subject. And, and the more heat that's come off of it, the brighter it gets. And that's what I love about this. You have this surreal quality. And when I look at this, it's a lot of what is going on with climate change and things of that nature, it's always in the news. So when you see something like this, um, there was times in the past where it would be sort of cliche, but I think more and more now it's becoming more to a point where, where we see this and we see it in this type of light, really. Um, it makes us look at it differently. And that's what I liked about this. It's the serenity of the scene and sort of this idea of, you know, things are changing. And that's what I saw when I looked at this image. This <clears throat> is what I would call classic landscape photography. It's a beautiful composition. It's a beautiful scene, beautiful range of tonal values. It's classic. It's up there with you know, the work that Edward Weston, Ansel Adams, and some of the other Western photographers did. It's just a wonderful, great scene. Use of foreground leading you back you said that little bit of the winding creek that's there and also leading you back. Um, the quality of the light in terms of it falling upon the subject matter. It's not coming from where the photographer is. Uh, it's coming from the side. So it gives you some sculpture of those beautiful rocks and the landscape. And then in fact, the use of the tree in the foreground at the very top as a way of giving you a sense of distance where you actually stand as the viewer or where the photographer stood. All that works really lovely. This, this is a really good photograph in terms of being a classic example of landscape photography. 
And then moving into color. Color is such a unique way. Most photographers for a long time refused to work with color. Um, and landscape photography, Elliot Irwin was really wonderful um, in terms of using color. And um, this is a really interesting way of the landscape. Um, it's not your typical idea of a landscape. It's not always this most beautiful, pristine place as with, was the last type of image. Um, this one is sort of the idea of how man and nature are intertwined and how over time nature is going to just take over whatever man has created if we're not constantly in control of it. And it's this wonderful thing where you just see this as the ruins of man. Again, same idea. Um, this one, you know, the use of the foreground leading you back towards that house that's sort of more or less buried in the background. Um, I think the color works really well with both of these in terms of, these could be done in black and white, but the color I think is really important for these. Um, they're subtle, they're not bold. Um, and that's what's really lovely about these. Um, the, the nuances of color, the use of the light, the time of day when this was photographed, it's not brilliant sunshine, it's slightly diffused and allows your eye to see all the subtle colors that are there. And it's really just a lovely photograph. And again, the use of light. Color really loves subdued light. And that's what I found so fascinating with this one. It's not brilliant sunshine blasting down on this. This is once again, the idea of nature taking over. Um, that subtlety of a little bit of that chimney stack coming up that's visible, um, the roof line and still nature crawling up the side of the building towards that chimney stack, just totally engulfing this. Um, it's sort of like down south where kudzu just takes over everything. This is sort of along those lines. And I just love this in terms of the idea that nature no matter what we do, is still going to come rear and back and just dominate our 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 world. Um, so this is a really quite use, interesting use of light. Um, it's the idea of adding light, um, bringing out a certain look to an area. Um, where the photographer is definitely thinking about what they want to do, how they want to make this more interesting than just coming up and documenting this interesting scene of these older trail trolley cars parked at the side of this building out in the middle of nowhere. Um, nature's not really engulfing it like in the past images, but the idea of this being done at night or at dusk and the combination of adding extra light after the fact it's more like using a studio and taking this and adding light where you want it to be to intensify what you see in the foreground in terms of those trolley cars and making them really stand out and become something really quite extremely interesting in a different way. And I really enjoy this for what it is. The colors are really beautiful. The use of the time of day is really good. Um, the use of the additional light is really nice and composition and design is really wonderful. And there's something that people call ruin porn. Um, and it's something that, you know, you can look at and say, oh, that's not a really good term to use. But I am fascinated with how buildings change over time. I love the patina that is created through the, the, the neglect of the building. But at the same time, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's something that was not originally put into the design aspect of it. But when you see it in this regards, in this building, in this theater, is really just quite lovely. Um, the lighting in this is gorgeous. The use of the perspective, the use of the arches in here, the oval window up at the top, all that is really gorgeous. Lighting is beautiful. It's really about the light that makes this image come alive. And I'm really just lovely. Um, and it's also this idea of something that whether or not it's lost, going to be lost, or it's going to be saved, this is a frozen moment in time. Um, and that I also enjoy that about this aspect. It's really beautiful. <clears throat> And what really got me about this image is the beauty of this, this sort of the solitude, um, the way the light came into this. 
And the interesting aspect of it is the chair by itself, you almost want somebody to be sitting in that chair, looking out the window, reading the book. The fact that there isn't something, somebody there sort of gives you that sense of loss. And that's what I was kind of drawn to this image. There's a beauty of it simplistically for just for what is actually there, but also the idea that, you know, there is a sense of loss. And that's why I love this image. Um, and black and white, I think it's really beautiful. I think it's done wonderfully. The tonal values are just spot on. Um, the sense of composition is really beautiful. Everything about it, I think is really quite nice. And then different type of place. So in the cities, there's a way for people to always go about making some form of statement, um, whether it's actually protesting with people with placards on the streets, as we see nowadays, a little bit what's happening, or simply like this, where people make art on <clears throat> the sides of buildings and try to make a statement that can be very powerful. Um, and that's what I like about this one, is the fact that it is the use of <clears throat> making a statement, something that this person obviously believes in, plus creating an image that is very good. Um, the fact that it's in black and white, I kind of, I find interesting um, because the black and, black and white photography for the most part has a sense of timelessness to it. Um, so this is something that has been going on, not recently, but it's been going on for quite a long time. And the fact that it's in black and white allows this to still be able to hopefully have some sense of not that this is going to continue, but we'll be able to be in, you know, view of different people in the future if this is something that continues, that it is relevant no matter when it was photographed. It doesn't have, in a sense, a timestamp to it that color can sometimes give to an image. So this is sort of a timeless thing in terms of being able to make a statement. Um, and then here we have the subtlety of it, where it's not as blatant as the previous one. Um, I just love the fact that this was just subtly placed over in the corner um, and looking at <clears throat> what is obviously um, the Asian restaurant and then just off to the side, a little bit of a sign, just making a statement about it. Um, subtle, but very powerful. And one of the things I love about photography is the abstract quality of it. And this is something that I think is really beautiful. It reminds me of a Brett Weston photograph. And that's why I was sort of <clears throat> very much drawn to this photograph. Um, the simplicity um, of just random objects, the broken glass, but it does bring into the idea of, you know, distress, decline, decay, but the absolute beauty of this, the brightness in the foreground of the subject, the window panes, the broken glass against the darkness behind it. I really enjoy just visually. I just, one of the things I do love about black and white photography. And this, it's probably one of the few still lives that we have in here. Um, really beautiful, just simply gorgeous in terms of how it was photographed, um, how it was seen, the light that's fallen onto this. Um, it's sort of like an imaging Cunningham photograph, um, very subtle, but very beautiful. The use of the black background allowing this flower to pop out of the darkness. Um, the values, the tonal values are very beautiful. It's an elegant, just really well done photograph. And then taking photography into different directions. And this brings in the element of time again. And that's what I loved about this, but not only time, the use of color in a really wonderful way, um, creating something. And this is the idea going back with light. Um, light is what makes our photographs and using the idea of light and time to create something completely unique is what I see here. And I think it's really quite lovely. Um, and wonderful, wonderfully done. And then taking even further, um, the complexity, um, the layering, um, the colors are just amazing in this. It's just sort of this cacophony of like <clears throat> fireworks going off and neon and what looks like roller coasters. And it's just color. All I see in this is color. And it's just amazing. This in terms of this, layer in this collage of color. And here we are with another version of this. And it's just very different. 
it's very abstract to a certain degree, um, very simplistic, um, these beautiful circles. It's not documented something. That's what I love about this. There's a little hint of some trees in one of the circles. That's about the only thing that's related to some sense of quote unquote reality. But past that, just the simplicity of the shapes, the composition, the use of color is really quite beautiful in this one. And again, falling into this, the use of the circles, but in a different way, where before they were far more abstract. We have no clue exactly what we were looking at. This, we get a little bit more of an idea of what we're looking at, but once again, composition, cropping, the use of the colors, the soft colors, and how they all combine together is really, really, really quite lovely. I love how this comes together. It's so subtle, but the circles, the lines, the strong use of the colors. And once again, the subtlety of the colors, really beautiful. And this, just this red and the warmth that's in this. And what looks like the water drop, I just found really quite interesting. One thing about photography is a lot of people are always saying it's not sharp, it's not in focus. This one has, very few elements, if anything, it looks like it's the reflection in the water drop that it seems to be sharp. But everything else is very soft around it for the most part. There may be one part up top that's sort of sharp. I love this for that. There's something about color and the use of color and the fact that there is the lack of the crisp quality that we're so used to seeing, especially since digital photography has come into play. There's been such a strong use of has to be completely sharp and absolutely just perfect. This is a complete opposite. This harkens back, harkens back to the days of film. I'm not sure if the photographer used film or not, but this is what I love about it. There's this beautiful quality. It's the way light bounces off of an object. It's using optics to create the image. This is so different than what painting can do. And that's what I love about this. This, this is very photographic. Okay. So now I'm gonna talk about the, the award winners. So this is third place. And what I saw about this one, when I initially came and decided which ones are gonna be the award winners, um, <clears throat> they just stood out to me immediately. They just were different, they were unique, and then they were using photography in a way that I just thought was really quite interesting. Um, at first, I was very drawn to this image. And this goes back to the idea I was just speaking about in terms of the use of color. And that's what I loved about it. That's what spoke to me at first was the color, the subtlety of the color, the, the subtle hues, the warmth and the blue. And then you start to notice more about it where it actually is because it has an abstract quality to it. Seeing <clears throat> the symbol on the ground of the bicyclist really kind of drew me in. And I was thinking, hmm, this is really quite interesting. Next to the drain, on the street also got me thinking. Whether or not the artist was thinking this way, I'm not sure, but this is what I see in this image. And it has multiple layers. So there's this look of the oil that you see after a rain and the beautiful color that it creates on the surface. That's drew me in. Not only is that there, there's also the drains that's next to it, where you're seeing all that oily water, all that residue going into the drain. So once again, it's that idea of the environment, how we are going about treating our environment. How are we going to change? This is all affecting how we are living. And then we have the bicyclist, the symbol of the bicyclist on the ground. And then you see the idea that there is this idea that we do want to sort of change things. And that's what I saw in this image. I saw that there was much more than just a simple photograph. It seemed much more complex, all right? That's my perspective. And then this is second place. What I enjoyed about this was the use of photography, the print, the use of light and the combination of all this. I just found this fascinating. It was so different than everything else that was in the show. Um, everybody else has got this, <clears throat> the perfectly well composed photographs, seeing one image at a time. There are a few people experimenting with the idea of time and motion and things of that nature. But here we have collage, but in a different way. There was collage where there was things that added to the photographs, but this is actually taken the actual photographs 
ripping them up, multiple views of a person, plus the addition of the shadow of the person within the photograph, the use of light. I thought it was really quite interesting. Um, it was very different. Um, and it's not the most, in terms of the absolute perfect color, there's things that are wrong with it subtly. And that's what I enjoy about it. I love the fact that this is something that's creation. It's taking photographs, creating something different and then photographing it again. It's this beautiful way of looking at something. Really this multitude, the facet, the, <clears throat> the different facets of this person come together. It's almost as if it was a cubist painted being done photographically. And that's what I enjoyed about this one. And it was just a different approach to, to making a photograph. I love the creativity that was used in making this image. And this one, this one I just found so haunting and so beautiful. And it was just so subtle. And the more I looked at it, the more it just kept drawing me back to it. The simplicity of it, the person being cropped halfway through, but then you could kind of see a ghost of the other side of their face. And I just love the subtlety of it. It was really kept drawing me back. This sort of this gray, steely quality to the overall image. Um, this big circle in the middle reminding me of sort of the lens looking through. So you have this circle, which is the aperture that would be in camera obscura. So it has all these different layers to it. The, the quality, the peacefulness, that gray quality, this does sort of remind me of what is the interior of a camera, which is dark. And then it gives me that feel of that. Then that beautiful little bit of warmth of the person just subtly being there. I always get the feeling that this is probably the photographer, I'm not sure, but it's also that idea of looking through that opening viewing the world, viewing yourself. So there's the multiple layers that are going on here with it, the idea of the camera obscure, the photographer, um, portraiture, the subtlety of showing people. Um, I found this really fascinating. I just kept coming back over and over and looking at this and seeing so much there that I just, I loved it. So those are my picks. So does anybody have any questions? No. <laughs> Can we unmute them, sir? Excuse me? I'm a, everybody's has mute on. I wonder if anyone. Oh, okay. I have a question. Sure. This is Kathy. Um, I didn't see my piece as you were going through your slides. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought Kathy, I had everybody in there. Kathy Leacraft? I don't know the names. Oh. I was a blind judge, and so I, I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Her piece, piece is a square. It's a photograph. Hi, Kathy. And Hi. it's a photo and it has an encaustic on top of it. And oh. it's a like 12 by 12 square. Okay. But we we do have that piece on our website, Kathy. So people okay. want to go see it if it's there. So sorry about that. I'm so sorry. I, that's my mistake. I just like to thank you for this narrative, um, I'm an amateur photographer, I made no entry into the film, but I do find the critique really very interesting and educational. Thank you for doing it. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. Does anybody else have any questions? So I'll just say this once again, everybody's work that I, I accepted for the show, I very much thought, oops, am I still here? <laughs> um, I really thought hard and long about why I chose what, whose work was in the show. Um, I, I, the quality of the work was very important to me, the craft that went into it, um, your, your use of photography, how you approach your subject matter, everything I very much thought about when I was looking at your work. And I thought very highly of everyone's work who I accepted into the show, so. I have a question. Yes. How long did it take you to do your judging process? 
Uh, I'm not sure exactly how long. I didn't put a stop clock on it. But what yeah. I did is I would go back. I would go through and I would just take a look at everything. And I wouldn't make any any decisions right off the bat. I would just look at everything's work mm -hmm. and just see how I thought about the work. Then I would go back again about maybe, I don't know, either later that day or maybe a day later. And then I would start like marking things that sort I of. liked right away. And I just, just said, yes, 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 yes. And then I'll come back again and look at them again and say, okay, either I have too many, that might be just an overload in terms of a show. Let me whittle it down a little bit more. So there's this sort of ebb and flow that I would do in terms of what looked good to me. Um, and I would, there were probably some people's work. I didn't know whose work was whose. So there's obviously mm -hmm. some work that looked very similar. So I would probably assume that it was the same person's work. Um, and if I thought their work looked good as a group in, I might have put them in together because I thought sometimes work together as a group can say much more than just a single image can. And I thought the group of their work was very strong. So that may have happened. Um, but that's what I would do. I just would go back and forth, back and forth. And I, 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 it wasn't just, you know, a quick, there it is, there's my picks. I went back multiple times looking at all the work and really thinking about it. Did you have any consideration of what pieces would work together uh, in a, a show? show? Yeah. No, that was something that was really interesting. Um, I didn't really think of it that way. I looked at it as being just looking, I based every mm -hmm. image that I chose on the merit of the work itself. I didn't mm -hmm. think of a theme for the show. It wasn't until I put this together to talk to everybody here that I decided to say, doing it as people, places, and things, because I sort of noticed that after the fact. So you left it to Nick to make sense of it all. However it was arranged on the walls is Nick's. <laughs> I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Very useful comments. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have any questions? I will just say this about how I looked at everyone's work. I do have my own aesthetic, obviously. Um, and what I tried to do is not put my aesthetic upon anybody's work. I tried to see everybody's work for what it was and tried to use, as I've mentioned, there's a few photographers that I would reference in terms of what I thought the work might look like. Um, and then, obviously were items towards why I chose the work. Um, I saw the, the merit, I saw the apparent use of knowledge of other types, other photographers that the, that photographer was using within their work. So having said that, that's how I chose some of the work is basically I saw there's a sense of, you know, photographic knowledge, photographic skills, photographic craft, and most importantly, creativity. That's what I was looking for. I just, I just want to thank you um, for your time and, and your care and your comments and analysis. And uh, just wanted to make an observation. It's interesting. This is the first time that, I, well, I guess we've done it a couple of times through the pandemic. Uh, usually when we have the discussion about the photography show and other shows, we're in person at the gallery looking at the works. But I'm sort of struck, and, and I'm just curious what other people thought, but I actually think the Zoom worked really well for this because um, we could see the, we weren't all crowded around trying to get a good angle or view of what the, the piece was that you were discussing. And this allowed for really having a chance to study the piece up close while you were discussing the strengths of the artwork. And... Um, you know, it just sort of goes back to Zoom can actually be a very positive thing, at least in my own mind. But uh, I thought your analysis was was quite interesting and uh, very helpful. Oh, good. Thank you. Yes, I think Zoom can be advantageous in that regards that you can be, you know, study the work a lot better. Um, you don't have to all crowd around. Um, I will say this, this is sort of, for me, not seeing the actual artwork is another thing that's different. Um, I do miss the days when, you know, a drawer would actually have the physical piece in front of you to look at. Um, so when we're, I'm looking at the work, I'm viewing it from, you know, just the digital image that is submitted. Um, they're very different when you see them in person. Um, 
They can be smaller than you think they are. They can be bigger than what you think they are. Their physical presence can be totally different. Um, it, it's really kind of interesting to, to, to see it on a screen and then see it physically in person. You're like, oh, wow, I didn't expect that. <laughs> well, and how they're presented with framing. And so I mean, exactly. my comments were to the, the after the aftermath of it all, the discussion, but I could see where it would be a very different impact seeing it in person from just on the screen when you're being a judge or a curator. Yes, and even for you, anybody who hasn't seen it and that you just view the work this way, it's, it's yeah. a very, very, very different thing. Yes, so it's hopefully we're getting back to the days where we can actually get back to see things more in person as groups. Hopefully soon. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, I'd like to thank everyone for participating this morning. And just a reminder, a reminder that the show does end tomorrow, Sunday, May 6th, or March 6th, I'm sorry. Uh, pickup will begin on Monday. People that have mailed me work, I will send it back to you. Um, during the course of the week, we'll get everything ready. So tomorrow's the last day for the show if anyone's able to come and see it. So thank you again. And thank you, Paul, for all your work. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. And thank you, Nick, for doing such a great job organizing and hanging the show. Oh, thanks, Brooke. I appreciate that. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Paul. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good day, everyone. You as well.